All right, today I am in Queens, New York, and I'm in front of an old sweater factory, which is now the home to Left Field NYC. Uh, today I'm actually wearing uh, Left Field. I have on a Mule Skinner jacket from Left Field and Salvage Denim. Quite impressive when you look at the details here. And these uh, chinos in chocolate from Left Field. So we're gonna go in and talk to Christian uh, about the brand and where like, he designs everything here. And uh, I'm gonna buy something. So let's go in and have a chat with Christian. Okay, so I am inside Left Field NYC with Christian, the owner, designer, the detail god. <laughs> and I say that I say that kind of uh, jokingly, but uh, I do mean that like if you pick up uh, any product from Left Field, you will notice the amount of work that Christian puts into just the minute, minute, minute uh, details. For example, if I would say the the outside of uh, Christian's products look just as good as the inside of the product. Um, for example, this jacket, this is the Mule Skinner. Yep. Um, with this really cool, uh, there's a, a huge uh, coal miner theme uh, to the products here at Left Field. But with the buttons, uh, there's this uh, coal mining uh, pick and pick shovel. shovel. Yeah. And then the inside, you have this really cool uh, printed on the pockets, which every uh, denim uh, jean you pick up here has amazing details inside and then you showed me just uh this the is, this is from the actual bandana that we have for sale so this is the print from the bandana that? from yeah from yeah. this bandana actually um the new blocking we're doing we shrunk the bandana print so you could see more of the actual print because this was actual size and as you can see you kind of get pieces cut off which is kind of cool but then again it's cooler if you can see more yeah so and then I'll, i'm also wearing uh chinos these are 12 ounce or those are 13 ounce, 13 ounce uh, mount vernon duck yes yes which uh, we have in a variety of colors and i'll show you but uh i've been wearing these and i absolutely love them they're just great everyday uh chino very hearty like you feel the uh the thickness the in these. Yeah, yeah it's just really really nice well well done um so Christian, tell us a little bit about uh, Left Field NYC. Um, yeah, kind of a you know a lot going on, but uh, basically started it 23 years ago um, as an option to all the Japanese brands that were basically regurgitating what we our culture and what we were doing in America and feeding it back to us. And I kind of felt like probably makes better sense coming from American. Yeah. That, that we could kind of share our culture from our perspective. Um, it's interesting from, from a Japanese perspective, and they have an incredible eye for details. Um, but I kind of wanted to give a shot and show it from an American perspective, growing up on the East Coast. Yeah. Um, a lot of the, uh, the details and the little things like the buttons, these are throwbacks from old workwear buttons painted brass with tin um, the name is painted in white over top this is like from an old 40s 50s mm -hmm. style workwear button we try to bring in incorporate old details with new te details um, the fits are more updated there's a, they're not old timey um, nothing is too high waisted nothing is too stovepipe yeah um, we try to keep it a modern but with the the original kind of throwback workwear um, denim details, um, anything like this is the work uniform collection. Yeah. We've got the which so I picked up this here, which I really enjoy, and I was I was very excited that this came out. And I as soon as you put put it on the site, I think it was on your Instagram, your oh, social right. media. I went to the site, picked it up immediately, got it uh, hemmed for, for for my size. And I absolutely love this. I was excited. Really stoked to, to pick oh, this yeah, up. Yeah. This is really cool. Really this, cool piece. this was actually based on an old 40s gas station attendant yeah. uh, uniform. We have another, and another version here. The two-tone the two -tone I thought was just really sick. Yeah. Um, we kind of modified a little bit. It was a little bit higher. 
for back in the day, everything kind of sat up. It sat up almost too high, like mm -hmm. the bottom of the rib cage. Yeah. Um, but we did a lot of modifications. This is all Mount Vernon. This is Mount Vernon Hickory, Mount Vernon Duck. So all American fabrics made in America. This is it's really cool. Cone broken twill. Uh, broken twill is a little zigzag. It's it's for extra strength and durability. Also, the broken twill helps with leg twist, which you get in salvage denim. Although this is not salvage. Um, this is two tone as well. Back pockets. Um, we got double double layer on the bottom in case you want to put tools in there. We have. That inside was yeah, pocket, in yeah. case you want to scratch your balls. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, this one is just regular. Now, this is, if you're wearing shorts or something yeah. under there, yeah, you yeah. can kind of get in there if you have <laughs> extra pockets. Um, the little details like this, this opens up and yeah. turns into lapels. Um, we have the old throwback. That's great. The green stitching is used in a lot of the old workwear from 40s, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, um, even still some today. Yeah. Um, that we kind of thought was a bit of a throwback. Yeah, that's cool. Potentially to the Irish that were here okay. as laborers back in the uh, post potato pattern. Okay, and tell me about the, the jacket you're wearing here. This is really nice. Um, this was inspired from a French chore jacket. Mm -hmm. um, it's Collect Indigo Moleskin. Um, it's about an eight and a half, nine ounce. The indigo moleskin is what was actually used in French um, chore jackets, mm -hmm. but from what I can tell, it seemed like the the French had used a combination of reactive dyes with the indigo because theirs is a little bit of a mauvey purplish okay. tone. This is a pretty deep indigo. Um, we washed it and it bled like a pig. Yeah. Um, you can see it has a little bit of the sateen yeah. effect in the stitching. Um, it's got like some nice little fade marks just yeah. from the one wash, cool. but, um, the fabric's beautiful. Yeah. It's a simple jacket. It kind of speaks for itself. Yeah. It's that crossover piece that you can wear with a t-shirt or collar shirt. Yeah. If you're going to a restaurant, if you want to just whatever, go into yeah. a coffee shop, you just want to update your look a little bit, look a little bit more dressy. Um, but this is a newer piece we're doing. We're trying to bring in some. Some different pieces. We've got a lot of stuff coming through the pipeline. Um, always trying to keep things fresh. So one interesting thing about Ridgewood, Queens, moved here when I was pretty broke back in 2009 because there's a lot of space back then that you get pretty cheap. And one of the most important things, it had heat, which I didn't have in my prior space and it sucked in the winter time. Um, the other interesting fact is Ridgewood Queen was known for sweater manufacturing, and they were one of the largest areas in the country for sweater manufacturing, um, i.e. this place was a finishing mill for sweaters. Across the street was a finishing mill. Next door was a finishing mill. All over this neighborhood was, was finishing mills. There is one decent mill left in Ridgewood, and we've made these sweaters, these cardigans, um, this was a mohair wool blend. These are mohair wool blend watch caps. Um, this is all made in Ridgewood. And our latest is made from Irish Donegal yarns, one of the last wool plants in Donegal, Ireland. Um, and we had brought over the yarns and we had them knit locally. So it's kind of a, a special situation they have all these little specks and tweeds and different colors and stuff like that, which is traditional to Irish and Scottish wool yarns. Um, these are the three colors we have left. We have a couple more colors coming. Um, this is the actual certification for the Donegal yarns. Um, very interesting process. If you go online and look on our website, you can see the men actually doing the whole wool dyeing and finishing process. So this is one of our latest pieces, um, Mount Vernon Mills from Tryon, Georgia. Um, we're trying to incorporate as many U.S. Um, denim mills, workwear mills um, that are left. Right now it's a little bit of cone left from the cone white oak plant. 
We have Mount Vernon out of Tryon, Georgia, that does duck canvas. A lot of our duck canvas is on workwear fabrics. And also Vidalia. Vidalia is the latest one. Anyway, this is um, Mount Vernon. This is a new rodeo blue. It's like a 70s kind of what we call like a rodeo blue, like that old kind of Wrangler looking blue. Um, this has been really selling well for us. We just did some new pocketing. We reduced the bandana pocket size so you could see more of the bandana. This actually has the Mount Vernon Mills label in it. Um, we also just recently did a veg tan label, which is a heavier five ounce label. Veg tan is a natural tanning process which uses less chemicals and stuff, healthier for the environment. Um, this will age and change color from touching it and from just from time. Um, this has the green stitching. We have the pick and shovels from Scoville. They did a lot of the old Levi's um, buttons, tack buttons and stuff. Um, all triple needled, felled, and we have some of the tabs in the back. We added the pockets to this. It's a little bit of a hybrid of a type one with a couple mixtures of things going on. Um, but one other interesting fact was this, I was told, was used by the Cowboys, um, this pleat for the wintertime as it got colder that they would cut this string here and it would expand so when they put more layers on and they were out riding around they could kind of make it a little wider and then springtime take it off and kind of shrinks back. I also have a black both non-salvage Mount Vernon 13 ounce. We've got the uh, 70s rodeo blue also in the greaser fit which we'll be bringing in more stock and in the Atlas fit. So this is one of our latest pieces. This is our dust ball work shirt. This is a beautiful Japanese Collect Mills nine ounce twill. This is heavy weight. This is not a plain weave. A plain weave is when the weave is this way and this way. A twill is, runs on an angle either to the right and to the left, which the right is a right hand twill, to the left is a left hand twill. Long story short, this is a heavy duty like the old school Five Brothers. Um, work shirts. You don't see this kind of fabric yeah. in a tartan. And although this is not a specific specific Scottish or Irish tartans, the tartans in that side of the world actually came with each family name had their own tartan. Um, interesting fact: when the British took over Scotland, the tartans were banned because they thought of it as a rebel type of situation. So there is a lot of history to to these. I don't know specifically since it's Japanese, but it is a beautiful tartan. There's felled throughout, even the armholes, felled side seams. We have elbow patch, old school detail. Um, these are copper tin patina buttons, throwback fish eyes from the old 40s workwear. As you wear these, they have black paint on them, they will start to fade off a little bit and you'll see a copper patina coming out. So it's kind of one of those things like denim as the more you wear it, the more you have all these little special things kind of happening. It's cool detail. Um, it also has the side runoffs. Um, we ran a green thread down the middle. Kind of, it's like our signature thing with the green thread. Um, and it's got the triple needle chain, which is um, the traditional work shirt. This is coming out two more colors in about three weeks. We have here, this, this is our only and newest denim. It's a 18 ounce shrink to fit. It's kind of what Levi's used to have the commercials for, if anyone's old enough to remember. Um, it's when the guy would put on his jeans and get in a hot bathtub and would shrink them. And basically you would shrink to his body size and not more than his body size. So. That is what you call the shrink to fit. Um, crazy shrinkage, it has about 14, 15% shrinkage in length by about seven, eight percent in width. This is also what you call a loom state denim, which is the most purest off the loom kind of denim you can get. It hasn't been finished, it hasn't been sanferized, which is why it has such a high shrinkage. Um, 
It also has the veg tan label. Um, we have letterpress flashers, which are made on an old antique German letterpress machine from the 1800s. All hand stamped, little kind of details that give it a special feeling. Um, we have pick and shovels, um, concave rivets here that have a flattened top that's on an angle, which gives it a, a look like it was hand hammered. Um, this uses a special Japanese die to create that hand hammered effect where the top of the rivet is on an angle. Also the pocketing, which is the last of the previous pocket. And um, we also have little pick and shovels on here, which we've updated. We have a lighter, more coppery. Um, for some reason, the single prongs, we have to use a, a flat and pressed in. And then for the double prongs, it's a raise. Some, some issue with, with YKK. But like here, you can see it has the hidden back pocket rivets, which you can see, the stitching. Um, we also do a hidden salvage inside. Nobody needs to see your salvage on the outside for your po coin pocket. It looks kind of tacky, personally. Um, but this is our newest and latest shrink to fit. We're going to be offering it in a washed in the local Ridgewood laundromat and dried version, so there's no issues as far as Everything will be measured. You'll know what you're getting. Or you can do it the old-fashioned way and get in the bathtub and shrink it yourself. Ed, tell me about the uh, coal mining logo I see on the, the left field NYC. Well, as you know, Levi's has the whole Gold Rush um, theme or inspiration, whatever you want to call it, with the turn of the century and everybody going out to California for the Gold Rush. Being from Philadelphia, um, a grittier kind of East Coast town. Scranton, PA, which was about three hours away, was the coal mining capital of the country back in the turn of the century, 1800s. Um, it was some of the best coal in the world. It was, this is a piece of Pennsylvania anthracite. You can see it's very shiny. It looks almost like a gemstone or, or high quality. Because of the quality of this, it, it has that sheen to it. It's burns a lot longer and cleaner. So there was a huge coal mining influence in Pennsylvania. Um, we wanted to do a grittier East Coast version of what Levi's was doing with the gold rush. So I felt like coal mining was underrepresented in this country. It's actually still happening today. Um, and I thought the story would be very interesting. Um, as you can see, there's growing up in coal country, this is actually kids from Pennsylvania. This is all Pennsylvania stuff. And this is what the kids used to do. They used to sit in the breakers. This is a coal breaker. And as the coal came down the chutes, they would pick out slate. And you can see this man right here has a cane, which he will smash off the back of their head if they let slate pass through. Or sometimes he was known to throw a brick, a rock of coal at them. So yeah, all, all that good stuff. This is actually a kid's helmet from when they were mining. This is a coal cart from Pennsylvania. This is Pennsylvania anthracite, like I said. This is mine script. This is actually what people were paid in. This is 10 cents. It has the coal company on here. This is another piece from a different mine. Every mine gave out their own coal money. You didn't get paid in US dollars. You got paid in mine money. This is called script. This is World War II. This is a fiber. You weren't allowed to use metal. Um, and this is a paper. This is from Black Diamond Coal Company. Um, you can see there's 10 cents. This is worth $1.50. As you use it up, they either punched it up or maybe they cut it off. They probably punched it. Um, interesting, weird culture that not too many people know about. These are the tags that used to go in the coal cars to let the company know when they loaded the coal cart that was complete. They got paid a couple bucks for a full coal cart and you would put your tag and therefore you would get credit for the weight and for the cart. They were way at the end of the day and you got paid by the weight. So this was um, a little pet project of mine. 
Um, as you know, buttons are very important to us. It's one of the few components that you can kind of add a little flavor to and a lot of people overlook and use generic cheap <coughs> shit that has no interest. Um, we don't, um, and we set up this button bar here. This is 1940s uh, workwear buttons. We actually have bone buttons from Civil War era. Um, that weird alien shape is Civil War underwear. Uh, we've got pearl, we've got porcelain, we've got um, buttons, melamine from the Vulcan. This is 1950s. This is a melamine, won't burn or break, military grade button from the 1950s. You can buy your own buttons. We can sew them on. This is World War I, um, U.S. Army. This is a Chino button. Um, and this is where we get our inspiration from. Um, for example, this fisheye is where we got our inspiration for that button. And we've used actually this to tone it down a little bit for the work shirts. Probably maybe use this on the chambray. Um, some other things for like the left field. This is the brass tin painted. This is a Washington DC workwear button. Similar shape and design. This one is not a two color paint, but this is kind of where we take our inspiration from. One other button are these two, and these we used and reproduced our own version since we can't get enough of these. So this is kind of things that we find inspiration in and try to add to your chinos to make them more special and more interesting. Okay, so now I'm gonna get to my favorite part, the shopping. All right, I'm going in. All right, so I found a few things, obviously. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Christian, for having me. Um, go to uh, leftfieldnyc.com. You can find uh, eShip internationally. You ship anywhere in the world. As long as, uh, <laughs> as long as uh, even Russia, it. even Russia, it's a little <laughs> difficult. But that's... And go to Instagram uh, at leftfieldnyc and check out all the new releases that come uh, that will be coming out. And I really appreciate you having me here, and I can't wait to wear. Uh, of course, man. Field. Thanks for coming out and. Uh, as always, we appreciate the support. All right. See you guys next time uh, with CJ Shops. <laughs>